Okay, Good. well, excellent. Let's uh, let's just get started if, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, so um, I'm Israel, Israel Lozano. I'm the head of um, um, the Latin America chapter. I get, we call it the chair. I am not necessarily say the head instead of the Harvard, Harvard Extension and School Alumni Association. Uh, I want to welcome you all to the, this event that we call Human Experience Story, an event organized by, by Midwest and uh, Latin America chapters. Um, this is part of a series of initiatives, including uh, what we've called the Extended Connections. You may have received some emails you know, you know, to connect with some of your fellow alumni. Mm. And, uh, and uh, we also, this is also part of a, of, a, of a series of events, which also include the book club and thesis club and social hours that which you've been part of. So let me first thank all the chapter leaders, the board and the office of advancement, including Jill, Felicia, who is, uh, who is uh, joining, who's joined us in this call with Veronica Olsen and Chris Natoli. And uh, these are all, all, all this group is, 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 is the team that makes these events possible. So thank you for, thank you for um, setting all this and, 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 and uh, giving us the opportunity to gather and have these kind of conversations and events. Um, so I, I believe we have some members of the board already in the call. Um, I, I... Well, we have Rick. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Rick, do you want to introduce yourself to our Certainly. alumni that is here in attendance? Certainly. Well, we also have you too, Sol, so make sure yes. that you get proper credit as well. Um, hi, I'm Rick. Yes, I, I'm, I'm giving you the spotlight, Rick. Everyone Good. should know you. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Pearl. Um, I am uh, in the Boston area. I've lived here my entire life, but I've lived around the world. Uh, most recently, I worked uh, for State Street Corporation as their global corporate responsibility officer. And uh, I'm also on the, uh, <clears throat> the board of the UN Global Compact, the uh, US network. I was the chair for three years. And we have upwards of 780 members. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I'm really excited to join the board of the Harvard Extension Alumni Association. Um, <clears throat> the Extension School did a lot for me and um, my family. And um, I've always been um, uh, one that likes to give back. So um, this is my opportunity to do that for the next three years. So. Welcome, everybody, and um, I look forward to working with you and seeing you all for the next few years. Saul? Yeah, and we also have Maria Evelina Gutierrez as well. Um, do you want to say hi? Um, yeah, hi. Can you? I hope you can hear me because I can't actually see myself in my, through my video, but I'm unmuted. Well, I can hear you, which for me is kind of like a pun, but still, yes. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I'm still getting used to the new, new laptop. <laughs> So if you can tell everybody what uh, you uh, got elected for at the board. Sure. Okay, I was elected to become a uh, board of, uh, director of events for the board. It's wonderful. And, uh, and you are located where? I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of transition difficulty like with, with video, maybe it's on my side, I'm not sure. Uh, Okay, we can hear you, well, you can hear me well. Okay, yeah, we can hear you well. Yeah. Yes. I am originally from New York City and have uh, lived the majority of my um, youth and teenage years in Virginia, and I have returned to New York City, and that's where I am currently located. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, um, Maria. It's wonderful to have um, different work representatives here. Um, because it's a new term, and I thank everybody for the amazing people that I get the pleasure to work with for the next two years. Same here. I'm very excited to be working with you and, and everyone else. Also. Yeah, so I just want to mention Mark uh, Benson just joined us. Hi, Mark. Hi. Wonderful. Hi, how are you? I don't know if you can see us, but we can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes Mark. How are you? Ah, there you are. Yes. 
Doing great. Hey, Mark. Hi, how are you, Richard? Good, thanks. Hey, Mark, if you can tell everybody what did you get elected for? And yes. um, that's a wonderful position in the board. Um, and um, you have so much experience and skills for this. So just tell a little bit to our community. Well, I'm honored to be the incoming director of lifetime learning. And it's an honor to be working with everyone in the board and in the association. Uh, I, I feel very strongly from the conversation I had with you, Saul, that we're, we're a board that feels strongly that um, we're one Harvard and uh, respectful of each other. And, and uh, we work together toward uh, educational and professional development goals. And I, I feel good about that from talking with you. And uh, I feel that uh, lifetime learning and career development are one of the four objectives that this organization wants to uh, emphasize going forward. And uh, it's part of our strategic agenda. And I feel that uh, I can support our, our team, particularly our executive team of you and Michael Fabiano. And uh, I, I've always demonstrated a love for helping people and uh, wanting people to achieve their true potential and become lifelong learners. And so these feelings are, are motivate me in my work. And, and I feel that it's, it's the spirit that I see in the work that Joe Felicio does and the different events that we have and I've, and I've seen in the past that she moderates. And so I like to work as a mentor, guide, and helper to identify uh, ways that people can develop their business acumen or their acumen and uh, express themselves in a positive, forward-thinking, respectful manner in career-related activities. And so I, um, I like the new campaign that we have at Harvard Extension to uh, publicize the different people and, and, and uh, activities at Harvard Extension because I feel that we exhibit a, uh, the intellectual and personal qualities that uh, make the school great curiosity to listen, to help, to move the community forward, and uh, all in the spirit of diversity, equity, and inclusiveness and international cooperation. So I feel it's a good organization and one where I feel very comfortable. Thank you so much for what you said. And um, You're welcome. Uh, thank goodness this is recorded because that last bit should be, <laughs> should be included in some marketing materials. It's so beautifully said. Right, Jill? Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Mark. It's everyone who has stepped up to serve. Thank you. And for all of you that voted in the election, we had an unprecedented turnout and we are just so delighted with the new board. So lots of good work to come. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So let's uh, let's just move on to the agenda. Uh, so for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to be uh, having a conversation uh, with uh, Sol Girard. And uh, I'll introduce Sol uh, in more detail in a few in a couple of minutes. Then we'll we'll move to a few questions, maybe 10, 15 minutes of questions, and and uh, five minutes in the end of the conversation with Elizabeth uh, Raditz. Who did, did I say that wrong? Did I say that correct? Raditz, Elizabeth, I think yeah, so. Yeah, that's correct. Raditz, mm -hmm. uh, close enough, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's uh, Elizabeth is the vice chair of the Midwest chapter who will do the closing remarks. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about about Sol. Um, Sol Girard, ALB 18, is an international mathematical economist and chartered alternative investment analyst, what is called Kaya. She's a data scientist and quant. She graduated top of her class and holds academic teach teaching fellow positions for data science courses at Harvard's, Harvard's engineering school. Institute of Applied Computer Science and Harvard Extension School. She has judged the University of Chicago Financial Mathematics Master Program graduate, graduating competition. Sol is the CEO, Chief Scientist and Founder of Data Innovation Labs, a data science and decision intelligence consulting group. 
She's also the founding partner of the blockchain Asia Pacific venture, Loclary, and was the chief economist and head of fundamental and quantitative research at Travinci Capital Partners and the managing partner at Head Quant for Oracle Management. Sol also holds a data science advisory and board director positions in international financial and four IR firms and acts as the vice president of the Harvard Extension Alumni Association Board of Directors and the chair of the of the Midwest chapter. So welcome, Sol. Thank you for uh, yeah. being here. Thank you. This is so exciting to be addressing everyone and to have this conversation, Israel. Um, thank you for the idea of having this because this is all Israel's idea. Great well, idea. <laughs> great, thank you for that. And I'm gonna call you in Spanish, the name Sol, right? Sol. If, if that's okay, Sol. It, it's, easier. Be... it's easier for me. Okay, so, so after, after all this introduction, it's a formal, formal introduction, but we would like to, to get a little bit more intimate. Who is Saul as a person? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so to disappoint, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I am actually pretty much what you read is me as a person. I am <laughs> extremely focused on what I love uh, to do. I work 20 hours a day. Uh, Liz always is like, did you work your 19 hours? Because my, my resolution coming back from vacation was that I was going to sleep one extra hour. So I was going to work 19 hours a day. So that will give me an extra day at the end of the month. However, I couldn't make it happen today nor yesterday. But I'm trying, Liz. I'm trying. Um, I would like to say that I'm a lot more interesting than what I am, but no, I am pretty much, uh, I love what I do. I am passionate about um, people. I am passionate about data. I, um, I, I am passionate about ethics and I involve and entail everything in the work that I do daily. I, I One thing that I think that that introduction didn't say as a scientist that um, I have seen is that scientists tend to follow a lot, right? I mean, there's always this peer reviews. I'm a peer, uh, you know, um, published, a peer review published author. Um, so I'm a researcher, you know, I'm academic as well. I live kind of like a fifth of my life in academia and the rest in the private sector. Um, but scientists tend to, you know, you see what's out there, right? And you tend to follow and then you have a lot of creativity. But um, a lot of times people don't really ask in my field or in, in general in science, there has to be a better way to do things. That is what I'm always asking. And I think that that's the difference. And that really classifies me as me. That is what makes me so different than other people um, and than other scientists in my field that I'm like, there, there has to be a better way of doing this. Um, the cloud, for example, is a great example. We um, reinvented the cloud from the ground up um, this is a three-year project for me. I have built an ecosystem of companies and I am, sometimes all, if you have a goal and as a disruptor, and I think this is the difference in between disruptors and people that don't disrupt necessarily, is that you just don't settle. You just don't, um, you don't accept just because this is the way things have been done, that uh, this is the way things have to be. And I think that this is part of the challenges that we're experiencing as society. Uh, as you can see, part of what makes me me is that I have a lot of thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, but ethics is very important, right? So I think that we are, we're facing this dilemmas as a society, right? We are challenging the way that we have grown to accept how things are. And the fourth industrial revolution, which I claim in my next book that we are actually in the fifth industrial revolution mm -hmm. because the fourth industrial revolution is all about, 
is all about these technologies, right? Like laying down the framework, a little bit kind of what we're doing in the board of our Extension School Alumni Association. The prior two years, all that framework was laid out and now it's execution time. It's a little bit like that in between the fourth industrial revolution. So I make a lot of claims in my book and of course, with supporting materials and proper bibliography about why we are actually entering the fifth industrial revolution. This is the time to do things right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the biases and the inequalities and the wrongness can get really massively um, aggregated, right? I mean, just by chaos theory and things like that. So as you can see, I'm a nerd. I love it. Um, and that I, I live... I love it. I just live my life in uh, with superhuman powers because the field that I have chosen uh, actually gives that to me and allows me to create employment and to build a good corporations where people are happy to work in. And that is ex priceless. It's extremely meaningful. Um, I am a, a very lucky person. Um, yeah. And the only thing that I, I don't follow anything, anything in the world, in media or things like that, but I do, I, I do like fashion. So, so that was, that was, I keep that was myself up to date with. <laughs> that was actually a very tricky question what I asked because, you know, the, pretty much all successful people that I've managed to know, they, they have a, a lot of difficulties breaking personal life from professional life because they love so much what they do, which is what you're telling us, right? And, and also I found another element also in the conversations that I've had, uh, again, with successful people is that desire to help. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about that. What, it, what, what, what does it mean? I mean, to, to uh, you know, having that drive, the driving desire to create employment and all that. You know, you, right now, the people that we have in our conversation today are Harvard graduates. Yep. That we have that to some extent the responsibility to help others I in do. any way that we can. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about how how how, how is how, tell us about that driver? How how does that work inside of you? What's to work twenty hours a day? You have to work for something that's far beyond money, right? So tell us more about that. Yeah, and and it is true. Uh, so for example, uh, and I know this is being recorded and. Um, you know, it's going to get distributed to our larger community. But um, I, right now, actually, I'm going through a really tough personal time. Uh, my mother is in end of life care with ALS, and it has been extremely fast. Very sorry to hear and that. I'm losing her, and I can't go see her because she's in Chile. Mm -hmm. And uh, three weeks ago, we found out that now there is no cure and nothing to do for my mother in law, which I love. Um, I love her, and uh, we're going to lose them both at the same time. Um, and those are the things that are that makes uh, life really hard. But I was raised um, with the realization that by you know my grandparents, my parents, that with privilege comes responsibility, and that is at all levels. And I have always been different, very, very different. My brain has always worked very differently. And in Harvard, I found my intellectual home. Um, I was so lucky. I was so embraced. I didn't go out to teach data science at the Institution of Applied Computational Science. I was invited. Um, I have been so lucky. Um, to have been touched by so many amazing people at Harvard and in life. And I think that you build your success on the shoulders of those that have come before you. And that is not just your family and it's not that people that have struggled, but also the people that have extended a hand for you. Uh, people, uh, women, mathematicians in the 1800s that were women and uh, in a field that if it's dominated by men now, I mean, I cannot even imagine how it was in the 1800s. And I read their accounts and it's the same struggles that everybody goes through now um, in my field. But the fact 
ethics for me is very important. And I think that people don't define that so well. And I think that successful people that really have strong ethics are able to uh, see beyond. You see beyond your your life and what is happening to you because you have responsibility. I don't have just responsibility to do well for my family, for my kids, for my pets, for, you know, I have responsibility to do well for all those people that I employ. I am bringing on four uh, scientists. Uh, we have had zero turnover in, 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 in our company in five years. Um, that's incredible. People love to work at DIL and Petitera. And um, I take that extremely seriously. And so I cannot buckle. I cannot uh, lose that, that drive because there is a bigger, there's a bigger landscape. There's a bigger quilt. There is a, there's a bigger calling and there's a bigger responsibility that goes beyond me. And I'm not expecting anyone in my company to actually answer a telegram or an email at three in the morning when I'm up or at four. And I know Liz, yes, I'm up at three in the morning today, sorry. But, or at four in the morning, uh, but sometimes they do. And I'm like, why are you up? <laughs> and I have a, a team in Vietnam. I have DIL Vietnam. And that's where I run all uh, software engineering, AI ops, and data ops that are actually um, two terms that I coined globally in the industry. Uh, because scientists, data scientists, have a high dissatisfaction with their jobs. And one of the reasons is because they get stuck working on a project that they were able to crack and then they cannot leave. Like literally they get pigeonholed. So I was like, listen, there's a, there's a better way of doing this. There's a lot of great talented people that don't have the knowledge to be data scientists, but do have the knowledge to manage artificial intelligence, deep learning, cloud computer integrations with artificial intelligence and API. Those are the people that should be doing the operations. They don't possess all the skills for a scientist role. And then you free up the brain and the power of the data scientists. And then now they can concentrate in new, more exciting, great things to crack and solve. And then everyone is happy. But I have, now I have four um, employees in, I know, I call them team members. I I don't call the people that work uh, in my company's employees. We're all DILers and we go and do DILing and we DIL a lot of things, but um, we're a little cookie and that's okay. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're very lucky to work for an American company. And I take that extremely seriously. Do you know the trickle down effect of the economics of those yeah. four people down? I mean, you are talking about um, an R naught and a distribution effect of wealth that actually goes five steps below them. It is massive. It's a massive impact hmm. of providing employment there. It is very, is very interesting how you connect the concept of ethics with, uh, with actual social responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a much broader way of looking at ethics. Uh, but you also mentioned something in the beginning of this, this, this part, and you said that you faced, you know, in, in a world or in a data world that is, that is um, uh, dominated by men. Uh, how, tell, tell us your experience. Yes. To, it, 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 I, mean, I mean, actually, actually, I've been working in the data world for the last two, two, two months, and uh, probably 10%, if not less, of the population in the company that I work for is women, and uh, and it's it's a uh, it's just like the oil world. It's uh, it's, it's, it's dominated by, by by men. Well, can can you share some experiences and how 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 have you been able to have success in in a, and I'm not going to talk about this from the sexist standpoint or any of those conversations conversations. I don't think they they have a place right now for us to be having, but from, you know, from the uh, perspective of coming over or surmounting difficulties, 
how's how's that been for you? What are, what are the challenges that you've had, and uh, how how did you go about those challenges? Yeah, so that is a really interesting question. Um, I have always been in a world of men, always. Uh, uh, I started my life as an economic mathematician in finance. So I, I lived the world of, um, of, you know, uh, alternative investments, hedge funds. And my very first job, I was 19. And I was hired by this inter Chilean German joint venture to be the board of directors financial advisor i was 19 but let me put it in context i went to to college at 16 so i was pretty advanced by that time and i was doing two degrees there in santiago chile so it wasn't like i was a sophomore right but um i'm not a very tall person by the way people i am five five and I'm not quite big. So I'm not a very imposing <laughs> image in a room. Um, but um, everyone was talking. I had to do a presentation. I had to do this financial models and I had to actually hedge the operations because this is, and I'm dating myself now, please do not get your calculators to figure out how old I am. But it was before the EU before the euro and I had to hedge the Deutschmark to the Chilean peso and build a basket of currencies and then trade it in the OTC and European auctions in, in Europe. So I was doing my presentation to the board, right? And everyone of course is older, they're all men. And I'm 19 year old, I mean, I'm wet behind my ears. and. Um, they, no one is paying attention to me and they're just talking and I'm standing there. And I think that um, I'm not, I'm going to try to say as diplomatically as possible. So they don't believe me when, when they do, when they do the, the processing of the video. But I think that you just have to be ballsy. And I mean, and I think that you have to have self-respect. I think that's the part of it. You need to know what you're worth. Uh, you have to know that you are important, that your brain is important. For me, it's all about my brain, if you have not noticed. Uh, I, I really, I, 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 am, I am thinking all the time. I already have this disruptive technologies that we're building for five years ahead. Um, and of course, there's certain things that I share with some people, with other people I don't, because they go like, so you're just crazy. No, that just can't happen. But, um, you know, I said, listen, you hired me to advise you. If you are going to just talk over me, I'll leave. I'll quit right now. So your options are you listen to me or you don't. If you don't, I leave. Please. You, said, you actually said all that to the board. Yeah. All of that. And I'm like, I hate to waste oxygen. So what's it going to be? And I'm 19. What did they say? Because I'm like, it's Tell disrespectful. Us Tell us their reaction. Tell us what, what did they say? Probably they, this, they the first time anything. that they say something like that. They didn't say anything. They were quiet. They listened to my presentation and they thanked me for, uh, and then I, I went up and they gave me a promotion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, <laughs> but, <laughs> my point is, is that if you treat others in the right way, there are certain things that you are expecting to be treated. Uh, they hired me. They didn't need to hire me, right? Uh -huh. um, so it was an irrational behavior. Uh, it was like irrational markets. I could not compute. Like my brain could not compute. Uh -huh. um, that was the extent, I think, for me of seeing that, you know, mistreatment, but I think that it was also my age. I was 19, right? Um, after that, I, I have always been hired because, you know, I, I, I'm a chaotician. One of the, the fields of expertise that I have is chaos theory. And I use chaos theory for a lot of things, uh, quantum mechanics, for, uh, for you know quant work in hedge funds and we have a dil 
um, hedge fund clients, and we do some of this work. But chaos theory is, is, is an area that I'm passionate about. Chaos theory for everybody uh, is to math, like quantum mechanics is to physics. Okay. And they kind of hold hands a little bit. So um, I was actually lucky to meet Professor Mandelbrot a million years ago. And um, he was like, you know, um, one, one thing that makes you special is that you don't think outside the box. And I think I told you this, Israel, you, you know, because the box confines you and you just threw the box a long, long time ago. There's no box. Mm -hmm. So the world is your oyster. And I think that that I have always been that way. And I have been hired, I think, for that. So I have always felt internally that I was hired because my brain was different and that was the value that I brought. Mm -hmm. So I never really experienced, um, I never really experienced a lot of this, you know, back and forth. And listen, I have worked with traders. I mean, it's like working in the locker room, but yeah. I'm all, I was always myself. I was always a lady. I was always me. And um, I think that you have to be okay with who you are. And um, if you're okay with who you are, there's no chips on any shoulder and uh, you can take a deep breath and you can stand for yourself when you have to and, um, you know, do the right thing for others as well. Okay, so you're talking about authenticity. Yeah. Okay, so let's-, let's, let's Knowledge, let's... right? Like not just only being authentic, but also like know yourself. Right, right, and I, and I would I would probably dare say that in order to be authentic, you have to know yourself. You have to understand yourself, otherwise, what you're exteriorizing is not necessarily who you are internally. And so that knowledge, that kind of goes, uh, you know, that level of integrity kind of comes comes uh, uh, all together. But let me ask you a question, an, an additional question to the challenge. And here is Sol. 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 Five, five six. Five five. Five five. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but in the chat, in, in, you know, in the chat, some people, some, some, some were saying, "Well, you're still an inch taller than I am." Somebody said that. I, I saw that popping up. So five five. Nineteen year old. Nineteen years old. Mm -hmm. A girl in um in the in, in in this world of men, right? And additionally, and additionally, and let's extend not just to this particular situation, you know, through but the, throughout your career. And generally, you are international. Yep. You are, you have, a, you have part of Latina, you have part of North American because you've been living here for quite a while. You have German blood. You have, you have all that mixture. So you have, and, and I'm going to focus only on the Latinas and the Latina aspect. Yes. A Latina, a, a girl, and, and, the, and, the, and, and surrounded by men in the, in the world of men. Has, has has that created any challenges for you? I mean, besides besides just all the, the hurdles and all that, being international or being a Latina, has that created any, any, and if so, how have you come over those challenges? No, I think that, again, I think that um, I, I'm, I'm atypical. I think that my experience as a woman is not typical. I have been very lucky. Actually, I am going to tell you something. I did not know what, is it mansplaining everyone? Is that, is that how it's called, mansplaining? Uh, the mansplaining effect, I did, I, I ha it had never happened to me until like two weeks ago. I'm like, oh, so that's what that is. Um, yeah, uh, no, um, I think that Part is because of the reasons why I get hired, right? I mean, I already bring a very diverse view and technological integration, uh, even throughout my life, even in finance. I was modeling behavior of prices in a way. I mean, people were not using chaos theory to do that. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So I was already awed in, in the spectrum of my competitors. So because of that, I think that people were always more prone to listen to me because I would, oh, uh, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always, uh, for me, it's all about the job. And I think that I am not very self-conscious about um, 
I'm not very self-conscious about, you know, even though I'd love to have a good culture, I'm not very self-conscious about even though other people may be about the the gender differences or the racial differences, uh, for me it's it's about the work. So in when I'm working, I'm, that's all I'm doing. I'm working when I'm with my family. I'm the silliest person ever. Please don't have my kids send you videos of me because like. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I talk like a baby, I kiss my dogs, right? But at work is just work. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with it, I love it. And I just work really, really hard. So um, I did see a lot of things happening to other women that I would not stand for. And also I did not, I am not gonna say names, but there are certain companies that I would just, will not work for. I have turned down jobs mm -hmm. if I disagree with the leadership, with how treat people are treated, with the information that you have. Please don't ask me to say what companies those are, but I have. I have, I have not agreed to move forward. If I have a philosophical difference um, and I don't like a culture, there, I, I just don't move forward so i have always been in space it hasn't been easy don't i don't want to come across of saying of course i limit my options a lot by being by being um so ethically focused right because the majority of people are are not especially in corporate america I, you can do business and do the right thing mm -hmm. and, and and still make money there is no reason for you to have to trade yourself right. for uh, for money. So yes, of course, it hasn't been easy. Um, I have limited my options. I take a huge subset of the potential employers or clients. Mm -hmm. If I feel that a specific client is not actually okay to work with because of you know ethics. Uh, even though their product may be great, I don't take that client on. Right. So you, you, as I was listening to you, that I, re I remembered something that my one of my first bosses told me, and he said, Israel, if you want to have success, find a place where you fit in. And um, that's uh, I'm, I'm 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 capturing that. You know, it has to do with the ethics, integrity, yeah. knowing yourself, but at the same time having the courage to say no when you have to say no because I don't fit in that environment because of my principles, my values, and my ethics. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great, um, I think it's a, uh, something that I, that, I, that I kind of like see across, uh, again, many of the people who've been successful when I have the conversations with them. Let me ask you something about your education. Um, you know, we are, we are a bunch of, we're the product of experiences, we're the product of, of uh, relationships, love, hatred, difficult, easy situations, win, wins and losses. Uh, but we're also a big product of our education. And let's talk about the Harvard Extension School. In your career, in your definition as a person, what defines you as a person that is a professional, what is the role that the university has had? Oh my God, it was transformative. I, I, the Harvard Extension of School, yes. Yeah, I mean, being at, I, I was so lucky to, I, to, I started in 2014 and then uh, I graduated in 2018. So I had two years to do and I planned it out and I said, I'm going to do it in four so I can juggle family, pets, work. And, um, and still this amazing education, but it was transformative. Again, I did not, I, it, Harvard is, um, or was my third university, but for me, it became my alma mater because I, um, I had never fit in, but also I had never been so included uh, by any other institution as I was with Harvard. I would go to campus and everyone wanted to know what I thought. Um, 
people wanted to share their experiences with me they wanted to share my experiences with them um i was embraced and i you know i was a distance learner but i ended up going to campus a lot more it was an amazing experience um across the board um it was a transformative experience that's why i am so committed to our school to our alumni body that is why I run for the vice president position. Thank you so much if you voted. Thank you so much for voting and participating. Um, and um, Harvard changed me. Um, but I also have this, um, I have an issue that um, Harvard, Harvard touched me deeply and our school touched me deeply because six months before I started, I became hearing disabled and I was not born hearing disabled. So one day I heard my kids, I could hear their voices. The next day I can't hear. And I have three different hearing disabilities. And I had no idea, I couldn't hear my kids' voices. I was like gonna, you know, go to class on the computer. I mean, I had to work, I had to figure, it was crazy. And um, I felt, uh, of course, I mean, it was, it touched me deeply. I felt I had lost my humanity in a way. You know, I I posted something yesterday on Mondays, I always post um, motivational quotes or inspirational quotes. And um, it's about cancer. And yesterday was the national, uh, a grief, the National Grief Awareness Day for the cancer community. And um, loss of any kind, you don't have to have someone die, loss of any kind rocks your world. Um, and I had to experience that um, with my, 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 my hearing disabilities. It changed my life. I mean, we couldn't eat in plates because the dinging of the plates would kill me but at the same time i couldn't hear it was crazy and um i was surrounded by amazing people at harvard harvard lifted me from the ground up it uh showed me that i could um be a mover and shaker and a force of nature but that they were things that someone was going to have their back and you also have to understand I'm an immigrant. I'm, I, I am the immigrant in my family. My kids are first generation Americans. I am the one that came to this country um, alone. I don't have family here. My family is my nuclear family, my husband and my kids and my dogs and my Harvard family and my friends. You know who you are out there, my Harvard sisters and brothers. Um, but that is, is, is quite, it, it, it rocks your world because you don't have a safety net. You don't have an emotional support, someone to hug you and go like, it's gonna be okay. You don't have that, right? You don't, and, and, and you don't have those subconscious neuroscientific triggers of dopamine. Like for example, a smell that you had when you were little that could calm you. I don't have that. I'm, to I'm here by myself. I've lived the majority of my life here right so i couldn't even go to areas where i could get a dopamine trigger in my brain to feel better i mean it's rough and harvard picked me up from from my bootstraps and gave me love a, a higher education institution they they our school is not and it permeates the entire the entire school we are so lucky our our school um they care about you you as a person what you what you have to give what you're going to learn and who you're going to become and they give you all these resources and it is just up to you to just go out there and claim them uh, they have developed an amazing um you know, school structure. And I, my life changed because of Harvard intellectually and emotionally. I, I was able to reclaim myself as a person. And I think that um, you see it in how I give back to our school, to our community. Um, you know, I, a lot of times 
And when I am developing these platforms for hedge funds and whatnot, um, a lot of times things that you don't see, things that you don't know, you just don't know, right? You, if you're not, for example, if you're not monitoring specific spreads or specific securities or whatever it is that you're trading, if you're not monitoring it, you just don't know if you could have made money or not. You just don't know. So um, I think that a lot of times we are, you know, we are held back by ourselves. Um, we are just held back by our insecurities by, and we don't ask more or we don't engage more or we don't have that extra curiosity, right? That would propels you forward. In my case, I had to put my, I have self-doubt and I have insecurities like every human, but I had to put them in the back burner like in position 1 million because I had to get through hearing first. I, I, I had to figure it out. And I was given every opportunity to level myself up and to really show my genius, right? Like we all have, we all have a genius to give. And um, it, it, I, I, I am forever in the debt of Harvard Extension School, awesome. forever. That's, that, that's our school, that's our school of opportunities, a school that, that's supportive. So it's, it's, it's great to hear your experience uh, and how Harvard was part of it and uh, helped you along. So I, got, I, I have a bunch of more questions, but I'm gonna open this to uh, the audience uh, a few minutes for uh, any additional questions, please post them in the chat. By the way, I, uh, if you have a minute, have a look at the great messages that you have when you were telling us about the unfortunate situation about your mo mother and your mother-in-law. Oh, uh, you. hear that, you got the great, I mean, some messages there. Thank, thanks everybody for, for posting your messages. Um, any, any, any questions coming from the audience? Let me see. Okay. So I have a question. Um, can, can the marketing committee just use the transcript of what you just said and call it a <laughs> call it a year? I think they, you, <laughs> you basically uh, that that was fabulous. I mean, I've had glimpses of your personal history, but the impact that Harvard's had on your life, I think, um, you've summed up extraordinarily well. Thank you. And yes, the, I can be quoted. And I think that uh, we all have these ground truths that connect us in Harvard Extension. And it's, uh, it's amazing. We have, and, and I think, of course, I have, I may have experienced punctual difficulties that are different than other people, or even some other people can say they're greater. But Regardless of that, I think we all have these ground truths that are the reason why we went to Harvard and the reason why our school impacted our lives. And that is what connects us all uh, as a big alumni and student body, right, um, over school. Right. I want to think before I start taking questions, I was kind of writing a little bit before uh, when you were talking is, uh, Israel. Nicole is from Paris. Yunuen is in Mexico City. Mo Farouk is in Toronto. Is that the same Mo Farouk that I think I know that I stood right next to on commencement? I think. <laughs> Luis is from Nicaragua. So I'm just thrilled outside of Chris, of course, in Australia. Um, but I'm just um, so thrilled to have this international representation here uh, in our event. Well, I have a, I have a question from, uh, from uh, uh, Ted and it's uh, Ted Rosner. What was your favorite part of your Harvard experience? The people. The people. Okay. The people that I met. Uh, and that is professors, uh, students. Um, 
it was a little bittersweet because I never, all of you, I don't really know what you sound like. Uh, so, you know, my close friends, um, I have a composite of what I think you sound like by the kindness of the nuances of your faces. But I, uh, and I created in my brain. Um, but still, it was so fulfilling to be around people that were pushing themselves and had the same drive that I did. And we were all together, even if you were studying literature and I was geeking out in the engineering school, it did not matter. We, we had so much in common and, um, and our experiences and how to deal with parenting and, you know, uh, the supportive spouses, um, all of it. Uh, we have the people, the people, the professors, the professors that teach in our school, they love it, first of all. They absolutely adore teaching in our school. Uh, it, it is teaching at a different level. I mean, I, when I teach data science in the engineering school and extension, that class is all the way from undergrads to postdocs. So it's undergrads, masters, PhDs. We have some postdocs, different schools, right? Extension, engineering, whatnot. But um, everybody loves teaching the students of extension. Uh, we bring so much more. We ask different questions. We are, are our opportunity cost to be in a class is much, much higher because we had to borrow time and, you know, not go to the bathroom alone. We had to take the laptop to finish the piece that or to finish the essay, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Right? Or like while you're having lunch or um, you couldn't have dinner with your family because you had a submission the next day or because you had to get together in some type of project across the world with students from everywhere. And the only time that worked was dinner time, right? Mm -hmm. And your kids seeing you learn and, and seeing the effort and the role modeling that, that, you know, we have so many, not just shared experiences, but our drive, yep. these ground truths that I talk about, which in science, in data science, I have to find them. I have to figure out what are the ground truths of the data that I'm looking for, right? And then I can model around that. Yes the people, the professors, the people, the people. You see, it's a, you know, some people say that great, great minds think alike. I am having some comments and I'm just going to read one from Nicole Resting. This is, yes, we're international and diverse. One of my most favorite elements of Harvard Extension in School is the quality of people, industries, roles, and countries, career paths, etc. Right? Yeah. Uh, great. So uh, I'm going to go with the last question. Uh, uh, um, we're running. We're running out of time. We still got to need to do a couple of things more in, in, in the last five minutes. Uh, there is a question that that that's been at least in the chat that two people have asked, and, and is uh, I think it was Raphael, and I'm looking at Louis also. Asked, what do you recommend to begin a career in the data science field? Oh, I love this question. I, um, to begin a career in data science, I think that um, you um, really need to make sure that your linear algebra is good. Because uh, everything in computers is discrete math and all the operations that the artificial intelligence and deep learning uh, algorithms do is matricial operations. If you do not understand it, you cannot manipulate the cost functions. So make sure your linear algebra is good. If you have failure in that, it's going to be a little hard to, um, you know, you don't want to be you don't know, just want to be able to do it, right? You want to be able to really do it, right? To be able to manipulate it at your will. So yes, linear algebra, statistics, that's another one, Bayesian statistics as well. So those are the knowledges that you need to pick up and make sure you have. Calculus is important because there are some times that you actually have these algorithms 
uh, artificial intelligence is the world of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So they tend to overfit. They tend to be the naughty child. They always want to do things that you don't want them to do. They get stuck in local minima. They may get stuck in subtle points of data. Data actually has topography. It's like a Swiss landscape. Uh, you have peaks and valleys. And if your algorithm gets stuck in a valley, forget it. You need to get it out of there, right? So sometimes you need to do a third derivative type of thing. So, you know, calculus, yes, you need to know. Um, but then I would really concentrate to learning Python. The reality is, is that the massive amount of libraries actually do work, um, you, you need Python. Python is king in, in data science. And you also need to know visualizations and you need to know data, know the structures of data. If you have those building blocks, data, if you think about it is, uh, and actually I'm gonna do a post on this, is all messy, right? Uh, there's all messy data. Then you go and you wrangle it and you can sort the data. Then you actually apply the data and then you start getting, oh, okay, you analyze it. So the blue chips are bigger than the yellow chips, but that still doesn't tell you a story. At the end of the day, what your clients need to know and what your, in, your scientific question and the data science question, the problem that you're solving, needs to be answered, you need to be able to entail it, to logically entail it all together. And for that, you need to be able to be strong in visualizations and EDA. Uh, Python is a little tricky. I will strongly advise on D3.js for that. Those are kind of like the building blocks and then experiment, try to go to Kaggle. And then you start seeing like the different areas that are there. Um, please always feel free to reach out. I have tried to connect with as many of you as possible. Um, when I thanked our community um, for your vote, uh, if you were liking something in that post, I would connect with you. Um, so reach out, reach out. Um, it's, um, it, will, it's, it's, it takes no time to... And I'd like to I'd like to add something to to that Sol. And uh, we have a big community in Harvard Extension School. You know, uh, you talked about the you know what you need to have and uh, how to go about it connecting with you. And like you, there are other people in our Harvard Extension School community who can give us a hand or at least you know at least having a, a sounding board for some ideas. You know, I want to find me a job in this area. How do I go about it? Tell me about it. Tell me about the data world. Tell me what are the companies. Tell me what are the key players. Tell me how, how can I go from this field to that field? Well, there are a lot of people in our, in our community. And, uh, and I'm sure that if we use the resources and connect with, 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 with people, in the end, let me give you, I, I, I cannot... I cannot put up my shirt of my human resources shirt. And more than 80% of the jobs are obtained through networking. So it's not in the job boards. It's not in, you know, uh, it's networking, connecting with people. I'd like to just, um, before- Can I, can I say something please, about please, that? Please, of course. It's so powerful. So I have been so lucky that this, the entire science team, their Harvard, alumni, but not just from our school, from different schools, from the engineering school, from the college. Um, they, I have not sought them out. They have networked with me to get those positions. And I have put them through, I'm like, okay, great. I'm so happy. Uh, one of them actually is actually uh, right now our lead cloud engineer for our disruptive cloud, changing the world one algorithm at a time, uh, even in the cloud and in outer space, <laughs> Pitotero to the moon, everyone's laughing, hopefully this is this comedy hour people. <laughs> but um, he actually reached out to me via the Harvard Alumni Network and sent me an email. And he's like, listen, uh, he puts his um, uh, CV, his uh, his website that he had made, all his accomplishments at Harvard, all the work that he had done. 
Uh, he's an, actually a mechanical engineer from Harvard. And he reached out to me and he had two other job offers and he really liked what he read about, you know, DIL and what he read about me. He went to my, um, uh, my scholar, Harvard scholar website. And there I also uh, have some blogs um, as well. And I said, great, Kyron. Um, I, I really think that you have all the makings for, you know, a good career and a lot of upward mobility in DIL. We have a lot of things coming up, but you are not a data scientist and you are going to have to be able to relate with these data scientists. And I'm like, I will hire you, but you first need to go through a three month unpaid internship um, in which we're gonna teach you everything you need to know, but it's two years worth of knowledge at Harvard in three months. And um, I, I was really rooting for him and he, he gave up paying jobs for that. And he couldn't be happier um, at DIL. Um, we're very lucky, the power of networking. Oh, excellent. Well, so thank you very much. And uh, I can say, I can say, I mean, you, you offered for people to connect with you probably through LinkedIn. Uh, how do people reach you? Yeah, LinkedIn. I, I have also um, started a, an Instagram and a Facebook page because a lot of people have asked me to, you know, help with motivation. And um, yesterday I actually did a, a post of okay. machine learning in very, very, very simple terms. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it because I need it for my for my new line of work. <laughs> and well, thank you very much. And uh, this is this is this has been great. I mean, but I, there's I, also fashion in that post. I mean, you know, it's Instagram. Personally, personally, I I I, I feel like I. I, I I've gained and learned a lot, and I'm sure that I mean from the comments that I see on the, on the on the chat, uh, people have enjoyed and uh, very likely learned and acquired a lot of uh, your knowledge and your experience. Uh, before I move on to the final, um, the the closing remarks, I'd like to I'd like to um, uh, introduce Frank Caprino. Yes, is, he's is, here, right? He's here, he's here. So Frank, would you? Would you would you have a couple? I mean, would, would you offer a, a couple minute introduction and and, and he's and another one of our fabulously elected part of the board. part of the board and sure, uh, right. yeah right. yeah well thank you Israel and hey you did a great job with this uh, event tonight and so did Saul wonderful good job for both of you thank you Frank thank I can you. see you uh, good to see you too Saul um, yeah I was the uh, chair of the New York City chapter for uh, two years. And I was recently elected as a regional director to the national board. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, working with everybody on the board and doing everything we can to make the um, Alumni Association a healthier organization and one that does a better job or continues to do a great job of um, serving the needs of the alumni. Thanks, Thank Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for coming. Uh, the board support, and I think this is gonna be the theme for this next two years, as you see this involvement of our board, our, our elected board members, um, uh, you know, it permeates through to the community and hopefully we can all stand on the shoulders of all of us. We're, we we have a lot of power. It's good to see you, Frank. Thank you very much. Uh, so I can't, again, thanks a lot. Thank and uh, I'm just gonna hand it over to, to uh, Elizabeth for the closing remarks, Elizabeth, please. I mean, I noticed this is this is this is great. I noticed that number of participants of thirty-one right there has not moved, so that's that's great. So I, I see that that folk that people are still with us. Bear with us for a few last minutes, uh, and uh, uh, Elizabeth, please. Hey, well, hello everyone. I'm Elizabeth Raditz. I'm the vice chair of HEAA Midwest chapter. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. And thank you so much to the board members who joined us. I would like to thank uh, Sol and Israel for this amazing conversation. I'm glad that I was muted because I was cheering loudly and raising the roof through the whole thing. <laughs> thank you to Israel for including our chapter in the Alumni Spotlight Human Experience Series. And thank you to the Latin America chapter 
for inviting the Midwest chapter to join in on this event. Thank you to Jill Felicio and the Office of Advancement and Veronica Olson and Chrissy Natoli for all the hard work and coordination. And thank you Israel again for thought provoking questions which made us all think a little bit harder tonight. And so you are an inspiration and a role model and you set the bar for excellence so high and you always succeed. Most thank of all, <laughs> Thank you. May I may I add may I add to that and uh, uh, you've been saying you you know pretty much both of you and everybody's been saying Israel thank you but I would like to stand this the extend the uh, and acknowledge also uh, the rest of the team Rafa Rafa he's uh, he's uh, here in the call Rafael and Ariadna and of course Ariel Ariel uh, it's it's an incredible team they they actually. Uh, it's, it's just me here in front of you, but this is all has been has been pretty much uh, in a, a team effort to be able to bring this this, this conversation to to live. And uh, yeah, just just wanted to extend and acknowledge their work. And uh, thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. So glad we still got that 30, 31 people, thirty one participants there. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. It remained until the end. And uh, yeah. So we'll look forward to seeing you in the upcoming events. Thanks for being here. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Ciao, adios. Bye-bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. 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 Bye.